Uh, mm. Oh, that's good. Bowling with the fat? Bowling with the fat? Fat. Get fat. This lane, this lane, this lane, this lane, I think. I would like to challenge Matt Bozak. Scotty Bull. Jason Belmonte. Yeah, you knew I had to on a victory Monday. Welcome, everyone, to Bowling with the Fat, the platform for you to share your unique bowling story live uh, on our YouTube channel. It has been a great cold day in the upper midwest if uh if you're not up in this area uh boy you you really don't know cold until you get below zero and uh we are getting all the cold right now so uh if you're living in the southern part of the country where it's a little more bearable to be outside consider yourself lucky we'll be begging for this weather when it's 90 degrees this summer but for now uh, we're hunkering down, we're trying to stay warm, all that good stuff. Jay Santos already in the chat saying, hey, Fef, great to see you back with a new interview. Thank you. We've uh, taken a little week off uh, because of our recent live stream. And CR saying, hi, Andrew. Hi, CR. Um, and uh, sounds like uh, you have a special connection to our guest tonight, which we'll get into in a little bit. Derek from Flush in the Pocket Podcast saying, hey, everyone. Thanks, everyone who has uh, joined us live. Feel free to use that live chat uh, if you have any comments or questions. And if you're watching on replay, uh, you can also comment on this video. Um, I do see them all and uh, we'll be happy to respond to you. Yeah, she says it's share. Yeah, uh, we've been uh, talking kind of in preparation for this one. So I'm uh, glad you're here and uh, ready to get going here. Let's uh, start out with the Players' Championship. The telecast just ended about an hour ago. And uh, for the third time, uh, Bill O'Neill is a PBA Tour major champion. Uh, he took care of Tom Smallwood, 209 to 178 in the championship match. Now, Smallwood had a lead in that title game through seven frames, um, but finished with three consecutive opens. And that opened the door for O'Neill, and he took the title. This is his 14th career PBA Tour title. His last came in the PBA playoffs in November of 2020. Well, congrats to Nick Heilman on uh, winning the 2024 Chippewa Valley match games. He qualified fourth, and then he ran the ladder. Really uh, gave us in the crowd a thrill. Um, he ran that ladder. He went, um, oh gosh, defeated Bill Fabian, Chris Hill, Brandon Cryer, and Dave Langer to uh, wrap up that title. I've made a lot of step letters and I've made a lot of first game exits. So I feel like I've learned really well on what hasn't been working. And so I'm just trying to, you know, not concentrate on what they're doing, just put more emphasis on how I'm throwing the ball, what I'm looking at, making sure I'm doing everything I want to do in, in pre-shot and post-shot um, to give myself the best chance. But uh, it's not so much that he, the, the title here two or three years ago played anything in, but just being in, you know, consistent stepladder matches over the last couple of years, um, it's kind of... The nerves aren't gone, but they're much, they're much, much less. And it's much more just, um, it's much more just trying to throw the ball well. And he did throw that ball well over and over and over again. This is the second time that Heileman has won the Chippewa Valley match games. He also took the title in 2019. He took $1,500 uh, home for that championship. 94 entries in that event, which you can see on replay anytime, the stepladder anyway, uh, on the Bowling with the Feff channel. It is there for as long as YouTube uh, is around. Trey Hendricksmeyer. Boy, we talk about him a lot, right? He's in this local area, and he is among the newest members of Junior Team USA. He went to that uh, five-day event in Las Vegas, earned an automatic spot on the team after finishing seventh overall. This is with adults and juniors um, at, the, uh, at the Team USA trials uh, in Las Vegas. Darren Tang won that five-day event. The players bowled five days on five different oil patterns, only one other junior in that event finished higher than Trey, who also took fourth yesterday at the Central Bowlers Alliance event at Park Grove Bowl in St. Paul Park, Minnesota. So uh, definitely a profitable 
and uh, a, a you know period right now and a period of spectacular bowling for Trey Hendricks Meyer, the Wichita State bound uh, senior from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, senior in high school. That is. Well, Chip Magnet is the sponsor, uh, the official salsa sponsor of Bowling with the Feff. It is made in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, distributes their salsa to more than 38 states and Canada. It's at grocery stores all over the place. If you're in Sioux City, Iowa, you can get your fix at Fairway and High V stores. Or uh, you go online to chipmagnet.com, uh, chipmagnetsalsa.com, that is. And we have got a new and improved deal uh, for the new year for Bowling with the Fat viewers. If you go to the website, um, you enter in the promo code BWTF2024 at checkout, you get 25% off your purchase of $30 or more. Uh, it was 20% last year. They've upped the ante to give us a deeper discount. And there are no, there is no limit to the number of orders of $30 or more uh, to get that discount that you can get. Pretty sweet deal. Uh, if you haven't tried it, I would encourage you to do so. It always has a place in my refrigerator, and hopefully it does in yours too. Uh, chip magnet raise your snack standards. Man, we got some people uh, in the chat right now. So uh, Derek wants to know if Jay's watching his show anymore. Uh, Jay says, I haven't been watching very much YouTube in the past month and busy with a recent move and some work. Um, so hopefully he gets uh, uh, back to it. Glad to see you here, Jay, of, uh, as always. Uh, Lexi says, hey, share. Uh, Bub the Best, who is my son Carson, saying hi. Glad to Glad to see you there. Uh, Bowling with Diallo says hi, Fef. Wow, we've got a we have an active chat today, especially with my son. Uh, you know, taking on the name Fef Junior. Uh, Jay says can't go wrong uh, with a good mango salsa, and Chip Magnet has that too. Um, but uh, yeah, it's good stuff. So let's talk about our guest, and this is a, a show where we're actually making some history um, because our guest is a frequent league bowler, frequent enough uh, that he's actually at league right now. And uh, if we uh, get this graphic out of the way, you can actually see that he's up right now. Uh, Mike Peck from Sioux City, Iowa, joining us. Mike, how'd you do on that shot? That was a strike. That was probably one of my better balls of the night so far. <laughs> All right. See, this has always been my dream with this show to kind of interview people at the center and, you know, either while they're bowling or before bowling. So this is awesome that we've got the connection good and, and this is all working out. But um, welcome to the show. Give us kind of a lay of the land there. You're at Plaza Bowl in, uh, in Sioux City. How many lanes are there? What type of league is this? All that stuff. Yep, it's Plaza Bowl in Sioux City, Iowa. 24 lane house. Um, it's, um, we're short one team, so we have an odd number of teams. So we're actually bowling the blind team tonight. So, uh, you have to come within 15 pins. Each guy has to come within 15 pins of their average for us to win. So it's kind of, so you just don't get four free wins, but typically most people do beat the blind team. That, that's kind of a coincidence because we'll be bowling against a pre bowled team this next Thursday in our league. So we'll have kind of a, a, a quick uh, run at League Two. But, um, yeah, at least that kind of keeps you guys honest. And, you know. Keeps you in the game, at least. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you bowl with in this league? I bowl with uh, uh, Logan, Wesley, and another Mike, and then Brian. But Brian is unfortunately in West Virginia, stuck in a snowstorm, so he couldn't make it tonight. So we're actually right. bowling one guy short. Okay, so you're you're going to get out of there really quickly. So yeah. I better I, I better get this thing going. Um, That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. You had mentioned um, before we went on uh, when we were talking about the Players Championship that you actually met Tom Smallwood before. Tell us about that. I did. I, he was in uh, Fargo at the uh, regional that I bowled in, and uh, just a great, great guy. I mean, just, I mean, just talking like you and me, just you know, and really, all those guys that I met, EJ Packett, AJ Johnson. I mean, every one of them. They're just so friendly, and uh, they they want to see you succeed. And if you have any questions, Hi. they 
Hi, buddy. <laughs> That's uh, my son. Oh, hey. Hi. Hi. And so, you know, any questions you have, anything. any questions you have, right, they will answer at you and help you. And and they just said, just keep doing what you're doing, and that's keep bowling. So that's what I'm yeah, doing for sure. Um, so Smallwood, as we know, has kind of a different approach to the game. He's got kind of a, a, a unique grip. He rolls it differently. It's a full roller instead of a semi-roller like most bowlers do. I noticed that your release is a little different. Tell us how you throw the ball. Yep. I actually, about oh, seven or eight years ago, I'm going to throw a shot here, Andrew. Sure. Um, about seven or eight years ago, I came to lead one night, and I told my teammate, I said, I'm tired of leaving 10 pins. I'm going to pull my thumb. So okay. I no longer use my thumb. I use two fingers, and it's all basically my wrist that I use. Oh, okay. And so it's similar to Tom Smallwood. Matter of fact, one of the guys that bowls, that I bowl with quite frequently, he calls me Michael Smallwood sometimes. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but uh, yeah. That's good, yep. That's a double. Yeah. See, so, it works yeah, well. So, <laughs> yeah. So he, uh, yeah, so he, you know, he has similar... You know, I have similar, you know, no thumb. He doesn't use a thumb. And and so, uh, we're, you know, we're kind of alike. But he's got more of a slower ball speed than I do. So, Okay. All right. Well, it's, it's certainly working for you. Now, the reason I called this episode Drop the Blade is because you've had a busy uh, last few days with this winter weather, haven't you? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I've... Uh... I've had lack of sleep, I'll tell you that much. But you okay. know what? As long as I'm able to help the people and get the streets cleaned and keep everybody safe, that's you know, that's our main job. So we've been going in at three o'clock in the morning and getting off at you know, sometimes seven PM, six PM. I mean it just depends on what we need to do and so far we've got everything cleaned up pretty nicely now. Tomorrow we're going in at three AM and we're gonna clean the avenue which has the uh windrows. And that's going to take us probably a couple of days to get that done. So, okay. yeah, we've been pretty busy. We've had about, I'm going to guess, 18 inches of snow. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah that's a lot. Yeah. How long How long have you been a plow driver for? Uh, this is my seventh month now. Oh, okay. Yep. So I was actually in the um, eye care field. I worked for an eye, two, doc, two eye doctors for okay. nine years. And then I made the switch. Just some things I needed to do for myself, you know, sometimes you got to look out for yourself, but sure. so I made the switch and, uh, so far, you know, it's been a good switch. Yeah. 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 So, you know, best of luck, uh, with this first winter and, uh, yeah, hope, <laughs> you know, hope those long hours pay off because that is, uh, wow. That's some, that's some heavy lifting. Pardon the pun. Um, <laughs> bowling with Diallo said, never noticed that about Smallwood. Yeah. His, uh, you know, if you watch him carefully, yeah, his delivery is a little different, but uh, certainly effective as he's won three times on tour. Um, you also have a history with broadcasting. Tell us about that. What have you done in broadcasting? I do actually. Uh, I was uh, I was broadcasting. I was doing a color for a guy um, on Catholic radio in the Sioux City, Iowa. Okay. And uh, so he was a play-by-play. I was the color. And he kept bugging me. He's like, hey, Mike, you ready to go play-by-play? You ready to do play-by-play? And I said, nope, nope. And you know how you get that fear of, you know, messing up or something? Yeah. So we were doing a – we were doing a, uh, a girls' state – or, excuse me, playoff softball game. And um, we got we got to the game, and he's like, you want to do play-by-play? And I said, no, I'll just do colors. Well, long story short, about the fourth inning, he says – now to bring you the rest of the game, here's Mike Peck. And he dropped his headset and left me all by myself. So I had no okay. choice uh, yeah. other than to uh, other than to do the play-by-play. And, and after that, I just absolutely love it. I, I, I really like doing play-by-play better than color, as a matter of fact. So, okay. yeah. So, yeah, my dream is to do play-by-play for a college team or, you know, I also do – public address announcing i've done that for i did that for 10 years for a high school uh dakota valley in north Sioux city south dakota i did that for about 10 years and uh so there, there again 
I'm trying to get something like that where I could uh, do a you know public address announcement for a college or heck even a pro team. Uh, now, those of you out there who think that continuing the conversation while you're bowling like that is easy, I challenge you to do that. I don't think that's easy. That was very impressive. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. What, what, what's your score right now, just so we're updated on uh, that? Three strikes in a row right now. So. Okay. So the yep. front three? Yep, front three right now. Yep. Okay. And this is game two? This is game two. Yep. We don't okay. want to talk about game one. Okay. <laughs> 178, game one. Fair enough. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Derek says, fellow broadcaster. Hey, Mike, uh, Derek not only does a, a bowling show on YouTube like I do, but he also runs a country radio station on the Internet. Um, oh, nice. Hi, Derek. So Nice to, nice to meet you, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and Lexi says, hey, Mike, from Corey and Lexi. Well, hi, Lexi and Corey. I know, yep, they're, they're from uh, whole Iowa, I believe, if I remember right, yep. Oh, I think they live in whole Iowa. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us live as we uh, get into to Mike's bowling story. So um, let, let's kind of get into the origin of that. How did you start bowling? What were the circumstances? It's kind of funny because uh, I had never really got into it. And then my dad, who has been bowling for, I jokingly say, 100 years, but he's been bowling a long time. And so one Saturday – he was going to practice, and I said, I said, hey, Dad, I, I want to go with you. And he said, oh, you do? And I said, yeah. I said, I want to go with you and see what this is all about. So he was bowling, you know, and I was sitting back there watching. Finally, I said to him, I said, hey, I want to try it. I want to try bowling. He says, oh, you do? I said, yeah. So I grabbed a house ball, and I started spinning the ball, just spinning it. Just I had no clue what I was doing. And I was like, wow, I kind of like this. So then I started moving my feet, and the ball would stay on the lane. And and that's pretty much how it started is I, I pretty much self-taught, and I had a couple really good helpers. Uh, I'll never forget Pete Strom, who, you know, he was my youth coach for a long time. And then, of course, my dad, uh, Jeff, you know, he like I said, he's been bowling forever. And then, you know, I got to throw in my brother. My brother is – he knows my game like the back of his hand. He can look at me and say – uh, you know, wrong ball or move your feet or, you know, whatever I need to do. And so, uh, you know, that's been a big help too. But it all started when dad was just going to practice and I said, I want to go with you. Yeah, that's so great. here I am. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I'll let you throw this shot. But uh, yeah. afterwards, maybe we can talk about that junior program a little bit because yeah. junior programs kind of vary depending on, on where you learn, it, right? Yeah. And junior programs, those are what keep the bowling centers going, too, because if you don't have a junior program, you don't have adults that coming up. So uh, bowling has really dropped here in town uh, as far as the junior program. I'll talk about that here in a minute. Yeah. Oh, boy. Hold on. Here. Nope. Seven game. Dang it. Okay. So, uh, so the junior program, they used to have – two junior programs, uh, Saturday morning and then a Monday afternoon league. And now they're down to Saturday morning, I believe it's three-person teams now because there's just not enough kids that are interested in the game of bowling. Sure. So I don't know how how that's going to be, you know. Uh, like I said, if you don't have a junior program, you're not going to have a, many adults that uh, – that uh you know will bowl in the future so sure you know bowling centers could suffer from that yeah what was it like when you were in it oh man it was competitive and fun we 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 really i mean it was i mean it was yeah head to head head to head we were uh um we had we were pretty strong we we had a pretty strong team always went to state tournament you know and so yeah it was it was it was good yeah. Did, uh, you know, since you started as a junior, you kind of made your way up the ranks. Nowadays, we have a lot of, you know, a lot of high school competition, a lot of college competition. Did you have the opportunity to do either of those? I did not. I, and I, you know, I kicked myself every day that I, my, that I wanted to go and do college bowling, but I just, 
I basically talked myself out of it and uh, wanted to work. I did, and uh, now I wish I would have because I see these college kids that are coming up now and they learn so much from college bowling on the tough patterns and the shots and the ball equipment, you know, and what to do, how to adjust. And, you know, that's stuff I'm learning on the, on the fly by bowling all these tournaments that I've been bowling, you know, and, you know, I just, I, I wish, but, you know, you can't take it back. I, I wanted to work. And so here I am, I'm just doing tournaments. Yeah, for sure. Tell me about when you made the transition from junior to adult. What were the circumstances and what was it like for you to kind of start in that higher level of competition? It was it was actually tougher because it, it seemed like, uh, you know, there's a little more pressure on you to, to bowl better, you know, because it's more, it's really competitive in men's league, you know. And, uh, and so uh, I, I, you know, the first year I – I think I averaged, you know, right, right around 200. But then as I got more comfortable, it was a lot better than after that. Okay. But it is very competitive, sure. which I like. I like competitive. Yeah. Oh, I slipped on that one. Yep. Right through the nose. Ouch. Oh. That's a big slip. Okay. But, uh, yeah, the uh, adult – the, the first year I was an adult, I I was joined up with a with a buddy of mine. His, uh, he took me on his team, and you know how you you just want to bowl your best. And uh, sometimes that didn't always happen. I thought, oh, maybe I don't need to go to senior or to uh, adult leagues, you know. Instead, just do something else. But after a while, I got comfortable and got pretty pretty decent at it. So yeah. For sure. But the better, the more you bowl, the better you get. That's oh yeah, yeah, like anything. Um, Jay mentions he spent the weekend at a at Cal Bowl for a junior tournament. Got home late last night. He says uh, they bowled twenty five games on four different patterns. It was the most well run junior tournament we've ever competed in. And he has a, I believe, a son who who bowls. And that's a lot like the Team USA trials that I was talking about with Trey. Um, have you ever bowled an event like that where you've got multiple days on multiple patterns? I have not. Um, I really wanted to go to team trials uh, this year with a buddy of mine, Ryan Powers. Um, but unfortunately, since I switched jobs, I didn't have any time off, so I wasn't able to. But that, that, is, that is one of my goals is to start, start doing those big tournaments. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm 49 years old, so I got one more year where I can do the PBA 50, and then I don't have to compete with those young bucks. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, that is that is my goal is to just keep doing tournaments and getting better. That's my ultimate goal. Sure. Do you yeah. remember your your first tournament experience? I do. It was actually embarrassing. My first ball, I threw it right in the gutter. Okay. <laughs> so nowhere to go but up. That's right, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, and then, you know, I got some, I got, I, you know, I have a lot of good friends that I travel with, you know, and good people. And they just kept, you know, pumping me up and, and keeping me positive, you know, stay positive, stay positive, keep doing what you're doing. You're going to get better. And every tournament I've done, I can tell you, I, you know, I've gotten better and better and I've learned something. That's the main thing for me is learning from these guys, Victor Cortez, Ryan Powers, um, you know, all them guys from Omaha that I bowl with and against are just phenomenal players, and it's fun to watch them bowl. And, again, I've learned a lot from them. Yeah. When when you go to tournaments, I mean, a lot, a lot of us that live, you know, maybe in smaller cities will end up driving away. I'll drive into the Twin Cities to bowl tournaments and things like that. How far would you say – you'd drive for a decent weekend event. Oh, I'd like to go to, I'd like to go to a tournament in Phoenix, Arizona, actually. Okay. Uh, I have my sister actually lives there. And then my girlfriend, uh, Cher, she, uh, has a, uh, one of her best friends, uh, lives in Flagstaff, I believe. And so we want to make a, uh, we want to make a trip out of it. And, uh, so we're going to do that, but yeah, I've I've been looking. I've been having my sister kind of keep me informed of uh, tournaments around that area. But yeah, I'm 
I'm willing to travel. I just I'm waiting. I'm waiting until I get PTO for my new job. So sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because the you know the one time when when we crossed paths was yeah. at, uh, at at this one. It was at the uh, uh, Champions Pro Shop open. So I, and that's not right next door to you, is it? No, that was a that was a long haul. But you know what? That was a fun tournament. Uh, I had a great time bowling in that tournament. Yeah. Yeah, part of a, a great field, and uh, Brady Stearns ended up winning that one, which, I mean, Brady oh, Stearns man. wins a lot of tournaments. Yes, but he does. Yeah, he just won the CBA yesterday. Yeah. So I call um, him the GOAT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's for, a great guy. For good reason. Yeah, a, as yeah. nice a guy as he is a good bowler, so that's always that's good to exactly see. Exactly right. Yeah. And he, uh, he, again, Andrew, if you ask him a question, he's, he's again, is one of those guys that's willing to help you or – you know, hey, what do you think? Should I try this ball? And he'll, you know, he'll give you that 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 uh, insight information. You know, and mm-hmm. it's so cool. To, that's why I like to be around these guys and bowl these tournaments because one, you get to bowl, but two, you get to meet some really really great people. Yeah, um, looks like Jay says, oh, this event he went to was also live streamed on Bullstream TV. I think I saw that pop up. Never checked it out, but I'll have to do that. Emil Williams, man, does he put on a good live stream presentation and uh there's share says uh hi mike and andrew from share bill betty sedona and mckinley she's got the whole boy game. there's some good people right there andrew <laughs> yeah she she came into my life and changed my life you know it's one of them special people so uh i'm blessed to blessed to be with her so yeah well i'm yeah. i'm glad she's around too because she was oh she says don't forget vegas in march Oh, yes. We are going to Vegas for the Nationals. Okay. Uh, yep. And that's on uh, in March, early March. And that's actually opening weekend of uh, the National Tournament. So that should be fun. Yeah. No, um, you know, she chimed in in the comments while you were bowling in Owatonna. And that's kind of how we ended up crossing paths yeah. is, you know, she's saying, where's Mike? And I'm like, well, we'll try and get him over here. And <laughs> we, yeah, we sure did. Pretty. So. He's yeah, pretty amazing. So. Yeah, I'm I'm thankful uh, for her too, yeah. but uh, you know, you mentioned the great people you meet at these events. How about this one? What uh, oh, what, what what was that all about? That's that's. I tell you what, I I could not believe that he actually would take time to take a picture with me, and that is, I will cherish that. I you know, I talked to him. I mean, he's just downright. Just an all-around good guy, and he loves kids. I mean, you can see it. Kids will come up to him, and he will never tell anybody no for an autograph. And I'll never, I'll never forget that. That was that was one of my fun times is meeting him. Yeah. So uh, that, of course, is surefire PBA Hall of Famer someday, Jason Belmonte. Yes. Um, but uh, no, I'd agree. Having uh, interviewed him a couple times. Yeah, he's the real deal. And uh, and that says a lot about our sport, right? Whether it's, you know, weekend tournament bowlers or the uh, greatest professionals that ever lived. I mean, they're all willing to, you know, to, to kind of grow this community and, and be nice to us regular folks. Absolutely. Just like uh, another one that you're, you'll recognize, uh, Zach Wilkins. Mm-hmm. I've become, you know, I've been, I talk to Zach quite a bit when I go to tournaments and, uh, he actually bowled that tournament as well. And he told me, he said, uh, he said, you just got to keep bowling. You know, you got to to get better. You just keep bowling. Don't worry about what anyone thinks or says or anything like that. Just keep doing what you're doing. And, and uh, look at, I mean, he finished, I think, 11th, if I remember right, on the, on the uh, tournament last week. So mm-hmm. congratulations to Zach. He threw it, he threw it well. Yeah, for sure. Um, so on that topic, um, I did reach out to a couple of folks that, you know, um, one of them is, uh, Jasmine Snell and, uh, she basically kind of put you in, into that category of the nice guys out there. She said that you're one of the most passionate and driven people that she knows. Um, and on the lanes, you're determined to be the best you can always looking uh, for ways to improve. She says, it's rare to meet someone so kind in this life, and it's been a pleasure to get to know him. I always look forward to seeing Mike, and can't wait to see what the future holds for him. Wow. 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 That's 
that's some good stuff there. Thank you very much, Jasmine. And it's been a pleasure meeting her and Mike, her husband, Mike. They're just two great people. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, again, that's one of the people, you know, like if I'm struggling, I can go to her and she'll tell me, take a deep breath, throw one ball at a time. So, you know, it's, it's just amazing. So thank you very much for those kind words. Yeah. You had uh, mentioned a little bit about the OCs, uh, saying you're preparing to go this year. Um, tell me about your past experience with that. You've been out to OC, you know, the USBC Open Championships a few times now. What's it like? I mean, I've never done it, so I'm always interested to hear about it. You've never done it? Nope, not once. You, you plan on doing it? I, yeah, I hope so, one of these okay. years. It's, it's a very interesting, humbling experience, I'll tell you that. Okay. You uh, you don't go there to score, and if you do score, you feel lucky because it is absolutely – it's tough. It's really, really tough. But mm. I like a challenge, and I'm going to try to bowl the best I can. That's what I, that's what I always do, of course. So. Yeah. But, sure. yeah, it's – I mean, I bring – I bring a lot of equipment <laughs> and it seems like I always bring the wrong stuff, but yeah. you know, it's one of them, like I said, if you get lined up, you can get, you know, you can score pretty big and you know, that's do one you, of the... uh, I was going to say, do you have a favorite venue or even a favorite moment from your times out there? I, I actually like Vegas. I mean, I, yeah. I, uh, I love, I love uh, the national bowling center. You know, in, in Vegas there, and, and everybody treats you so, so well and wonderful out there. Um, I went to Reno last year. I didn't much care for Reno. It's pretty sketchy. It was pretty sketchy. Uh, so I, I wasn't a real big fan of Reno. But, um, you know, just being there with, with the people that I was with, you know, I, I got the bowl doubles with my brother. And, you know, it was just, just a wonderful experience. It was fun. Okay. How would your brother say you are as a doubles partner? <laughs> uh, well, uh, he's probably had to have five back surgeries to carry me, and I'm sure uh, I'm sure you're you're aware of that. I'm sure, right? I'm not. No, oh, I just, you're not. Okay, I just took a shot in the dark there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he uh, he always carries me for some reason. I don't know if I try too hard with him, you know, or you know, I just got a bowl and and not worry about it. But you know, he always seems to carry us you know like last last year we got a check because of him not because of me and uh but you know what bowling with my brother is 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 everything to me i mean i you know i i love bowling with him i get all kinds of information from him he's one of the smartest guys as far as bowling equipment that i know uh besides my ball driller adam danielson who helps me quite a bit as well um but my brother, you know, and then I also have the pleasure of bowling with my dad. I mean, not a, not a lot of guys can say, you know, you can bowl with your, your, your dad for so long. And I've been bowling with him for quite a while. So that's also, you know, a, a very fun, memorable time to have with him. And then I also bowl. Fortunately, I get to bowl with my son as well. And, uh, you know, he's really picked up the game. Uh, you know, we're working on a lot of things with him, you know, as far as his – his thinking ability, you know, as far as like, you know, switching balls and all that stuff, you know. So he's, you know, he's picking up the game a lot. And he, his passion for the game is none other than, I mean, I can't even compete with the passion that he has. So um, I've, I've been fortunate to bowl with a lot of my family too. So that's that's been fun. Yeah, that's awesome because not only do you get the good times with the people you love the most, but the support. I mean, having that support is, is priceless. That's exactly right. And when my brother moved away and uh, to Des Moines, he lives in Des Moines, Iowa. And I, when he moved away and I said, well, there goes one, my doubles partner, and two, there goes my teammate. So I lost a good teammate, but him and I were really good teammates together. So like I said, I get to bowl with my dad. And my dad, uh, you know, he's uh, – 70, I think I'm going to get this wrong probably, but I think he's 77 and okay. still bowling. I think he averages about right around 190. But, you know, like I said, just making memories bowling with my dad because a lot of people will say to me, God, I wish I could bowl with my dad. Yeah. 
for sure. Yeah, count me among them. Um, give us a score update. It looked like you had, what, three or four in a row now? I had three strikes in a row, then a nine spare, and then the split, and now I have four strikes in a row. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you're, what, around the 130s, 140s through seven or so? 156 through six. Okay, yep. even better. <laughs> even better. We've got uh, a few comments. Jay saying uh, he actually talked to Emil. And uh, he said he knows me. Yeah, we uh, we crossed paths in Egan, Minnesota. Um, there you go. We thought Jay was from Minnesota because uh, Jay asked him if he was familiar with the channel. Yeah, uh, he was uh, the live streamer at the PWBA Regional there. Um, so we got to chat a little bit. He's a great guy and always does great work. And yeah, he just recently bought uh, Bullstream TV. And, uh, and Derek says, you will never meet Michael Jordan. But you can meet and build a relationship with guys like Jason Belmonte and the rest of the best bowlers in the world. And that is why our sport is the best, the access uh, to, to these greats. Isn't that cool when you can go to a tour stop and actually have some face time with these guys? Oh, I'm telling you what, that was, that was you know, I, I spent my entire time in Vegas, I was at the bowling center watching these guys. And, uh, you know, I didn't care about gambling or anything like that i was there watching bowling and that's what i it it was it was a pleasure it really was yeah great stuff for sure um all right so uh i've got uh, another uh another little statement or two here from uh, victor cortez um he says that you are easy incredibly easy to get along with and a good guy uh, he says you usually travel in a group to tournaments with Ryan Powers, and uh, he says you're always willing to grind out the tough blocks. And that's kind of a special skill. I mean, not everybody has that ability. What kind of goes through your mind when things maybe aren't going exactly the way you'd like to see them go? Well, I just, you know, I take a deep breath, and uh, as Jasmine would tell me, go to my timeout chair. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, you just... You block everything out. You think about the next shot, not the previous shot or the two previous shots that you threw the bad ball. And, you know, those two guys, Ryan and Victor, have been awesome for me to be around because, I mean, they're incredibly good, for one, but their their, uh, insight to me to help me has been really, really helpful. And I've made some cuts because of those two. You know, I'll ask a ball chain, you know, hey, what do you think about that ball? It's not really getting to the pocket, but it's, it's you know, it's, it's real light. Okay, grab something with a little more surface or, you know, grab something that's not going to hook so much, you know. And uh, so, yeah, those, those two guys have been wonderful. And, and then, like I said, the friendships that you, you get to meet, you know, with these two guys too, uh, you know, is always, you know, some memories that we've made traveling together and staying in hotels and it's just been a lot of fun. Yeah. Lexi says that now that you're famous, Corey wants your autograph at the next tournament you go to. <laughs> well, Corey's, uh, Corey's, <laughs> Corey's famous as well. He's a hell of a golfer. So oh, okay. I'll give him my autograph if I get his autograph for golf. <laughs> there you go. That, that sounds like an even trade. <laughs> that's an even trade, right? And yeah. that's one thing I was going to tell you, too, that Zach Wilkins told me after I throw this shot here. I'll tell you what he told me. Sure. Oh, I'll get there. There we go. Yep. Right. <laughs> um, he said, all bowlers, when you go to a bowling tournament, you not only bring bowling balls, but you bring golf clubs. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> every bowler, it seems like what, when they're not bowling, they're at the golf course. AJ Johnson was, EJ yes. Tackett. And that was uh, fun to talk to them guys about that. And, you know, you golf? I'm like, yeah, but I'm horrible. Mm-hmm. I'm a horrible golfer. But I love to golf. I'm not very good at it. My girlfriend's really good. Yeah. She's a. There we go. You, you can tell her I average 2 0 in both. <laughs> well, I'm sure she'll comment. She's, she was a she was actually a state champion. Oh wow! Yeah. So okay. When we go golfing, I just uh, I let her. She just runs all over me. So that's yeah. all right, though. Yeah, for sure. All right, that's pretty good. 
There we go. Okay. All right. So my final score, 256 on that one, boys. There you go. What yeah. uh, What would you say the – I'm assuming are you on house and, and what's the shot like in that setting? Yes, it's, it's a house shot. It's uh, It's been – you know, all year it's been pretty tough, but uh, – I'm starting to figure it out with the equipment, you know, with the, all the equipment that you can buy and try and stuff. You know, I've uh, really learned how to how to adjust, and that's what I did. I just got some different equipment, and now I'm back to more and better except for that first game. Yeah. No, this is this is nice here. Jay says we both agree that you're an excellent interviewer. Thank you so much. I mean, you know, from you and from email, that means the world. And uh, I mean, you know, I, I it's fun for me, and I'm sure the live streaming is fun for him. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you've seen uh, Emil Williams on uh, Bullstream TV or anything like that, but uh, he does a heck of a job. I have not, terms. and I I'm gonna have to plan on checking him out though. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. does he does the PWBA events and some other high level tournaments around the country and uh, just really good stuff. Um, so you know, kind of going on with what Victor told me, um, he says that you do a really good job of understanding your strengths and taking advantage of the lanes when they transition and they come to you. Um, is that something? that you feel like comes natural to you? Or is that something that you feel like you had to kind of work on to get to, to master? I had, I had to work on it, but I feel it does come a lot easier now because I, and I watch it is the ball reaction. When I'm, when I'm seeing my ball do different things, that's when I know, okay, it's time to switch. It's time to switch. Don't wait. Cause if you wait, you're going to, it's not going to be a good deal. So, right. you know, switch now. And just be done with it. And that's what I've learned is the earlier that I switch, the better I bowl. Yeah, for sure. He also mentioned uh, that your character is what really stands out on the lanes. He says you get along with everyone, whether you're having a good or a bad block in tournaments. And that's something that can be rare because depending on the circumstances and the person it happens to, you know, some bowlers you don't really want to be around when they're not doing so hot. Yeah, I, you know, I've learned again, you know, from past experiences, you know, where I used to get upset if I miss a 10 pin or, you know, something like that. But you know what? At the end of the day, it does you no good because it just makes you bowl worse, actually. The matter, you can't bowl mad. That's what I always, you know, that's what my girlfriend always, okay, babe, you can't bowl mad, mm -hmm. you know, so take your deep breath, sit in your timeout chair, as Jasmine would tell me, and and move on to the next ball. And, and nine times out of 10, when I do that, I strike. So, yeah. but boy, those uh, comments from Victor, those really uh, mean a lot to me that's coming from him because he's one of the guys I actually look up to, him and Ryan. And, uh, you know, I want to, every time I get in a tournament with them guys, I want to beat them. You know, I know they're my friends and stuff, but I'm sure they want to beat me too. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting closer. I haven't done it yet, but I'm getting closer. <laughs> oh, somebody just, uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, wow. Just, just oh, in time. wow. What happened there? That, that 10 pin slid to the six pin spot. Oh, geez. Wow. Holy cow. That Not should have definitely been a strike. Isn't that the worst? That is. Yeah. Holy cow. Oh, well. Just got to pick up a spare and miss it. Yep, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> I... well, well, you know, if it, if it makes you feel any better, Cher just said she's a big fan <laughs> of us both, and thanks for live streaming the tournaments. You're my favorite. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. But, uh, yeah, I mean... Tell me about the support that she gives you in, in the bowling sense. You said she's a golfer. Is she a bowler? She's not, but she wants to have me, you know, give her some lessons and we plan on it. Um, but, you know, golf is her, uh, her main sport. But I would love to teach her and uh, see what she could do, and maybe she would get into it as well. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, you know, you've brought her up a few times without me asking. So even though she's not a bowler per se at the moment, she certainly understands what that support means to you. Oh yeah, she's she's been a she's been everything I could ask for. I mean, she goes to tournaments, never complains. She cheers me on, and she's actually met all my friends in my circle and all my friends love her and when she's not at a tournament they're going to ask me hey where's she at where's she at <laughs> so i'm telling you what man you know when you meet somebody that gives you that support and you know and wants you to succeed and, and do what you love to do there's nothing more than you can ask for yeah that's a special thing for sure um, so, uh, Connor Brown in here says, Hey, he was on a few episodes ago. Thanks for tuning in live. Uh, Derek wants him to check out his podcast. Um, so yeah, hopefully we've made a connection there, but, uh, let's talk about kind of what comes next here. I mean, you've got, you know, the rest of the season ahead of you, you've talked about your plans to go to the OC. Uh, what other events are you planning to go to in the near future? Here? Um, well, I do a lot of tournaments in Fremont, Nebraska, okay. and, uh, I'm planning on doing one, hopefully, in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Um, and uh, I kind of wait for Ryan Powers to give me the schedule to see where we're going next. And, uh, you know, if I can make it, I can make it. You know, it also depends on the weather. I have to kind of yeah. watch, you know, because of the weather. So, um, sure. you know, if, if uh, there's a snowstorm coming, I'm probably not bowling. I'm probably snow plowing. So, yeah. you know, it's unless I take – you know, PTO when I have it, but, uh, you know, it's just, uh, one of them things, you know, it's part of the job. And you're probably safer plowing the snow locally than trying to drive 150 miles to a tournament. Right. That's the other thing I was going to say is if, if I'm out snow plowing, there might not be a bowling tournament then, right? right. You know, I'm sure it might be all over the place. So, so who knows, but sure. I, yeah, I do plan on, I plan on bowling, uh, Oh, shoot. Up. Uh, there's one in Waterloo, Iowa, uh, the GIBA Winter Classic. Um, there's the um, Sioux City Masters Tournament. That's in February. There's a 10, 10 gamer in Omaha that I plan on doing. So, I mean, there's, there's quite a few, you know, and that's how you get better is just doing these tournaments. Yeah, for sure. So, what do you and have like up I there said, right traveling, now? Traveling is fun too. I have a nine minus. And now it's seven talent. Okay. That's a spare, I think. Nope. Yep. There we go. Seven spare. Okay. Okay. Was that three, six, ten? Yep. I thought I chopped it, but I, I got lucky. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Lexi says, get her into bowling, meaning share. Uh, she says, Corey just got her her first ball in twos. And her, you know, the two of them can learn together. Yeah. Hey, you know, Lexi, I saw that on uh, on Facebook. I saw the picture of your bowling ball, and uh, yeah, that, that sounds uh, sounds like a plan. We have to have a a double date and go bowling. See, there you go. We're growing this sport two at a time, um, and uh, yeah. And Jay says that's awesome. Um, he says he always did more pheasant hunting than bowling when he was in Iowa. Um, but there, but there's a great bowling scene there. I mean, you've got a lot of talent there and some great tournaments. Yeah, there is. You know, around the area, I wish there was more in Sioux City. There's just not, there's just not the demand like there is in Omaha. I mean, you can, if you want to, I think you could bowl every weekend in Omaha. Sure. But uh, there's just not. I mean, a lot of people that just don't, you know, bowl. I guess in Sioux City, and uh, you know, a lot of people don't travel, and you know, so. I'm one that, you know, I got got to meet up with Victor and Ryan and all these other people, and I just started going to these tournaments, and, and then they just started inviting me. Hey, you want to go with us here? You want to go with us there? I'm like, yep, sure do, yep, sure do. And it just, you know, evolved after that, so. Okay. Yeah. So, so how about, you know, going further into the future? Do you have any ultimate goal uh, in the sport? I mean, you mentioned PBA 50. Um, you know, you're close to, to that age now. Do you have a, a goal of, you know, being a, at a certain level competitively or even working in the industry? I, you know what? I, uh, I do. I, I, my goal, one of my goals is to, 
to do some tour stops, to do the big, the PTQs and, you know, that stuff to possibly make, you know, a show. Who knows, you know, you never know. Why not me, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and so that is one of my goals. Uh, my other goal is just to get better, just to bowl on the, on the tougher patterns, like Victor said, you know, the harder patterns that, oh, my gosh, I got an ugly strike there. Thank you. Uh <laughs> And, uh, you know, and that's how you get better to get to the next level. But, you know, down the road, you know, I can see myself doing some PBA 50 stuff. I really can. Cool. Well, best of luck to you in that. I hope that goes well for you. And we, you know, we see you on Bull TV or, or on, <laughs> on regular television, uh, you know, doing what you love. Um, we're going to do something here called Off the Sheet. And what that is, is when I challenge you, uh, to challenge somebody else to be on a future episode. Doesn't have to be the greatest bowler in the world, but certainly can. Um, you know, we look for people who are passionate about the sport and have a unique story to tell. So, Mike Peck, who would you like to challenge to be on a future episode of Bowling with the Fest? I'm going to challenge Victor Cortez, actually. That was, my, that was the first one that came to mind. That guy, he can dissect bowling like no other. I mean... He's got a TikTok show that I watch quite often, and I tell you what, I've learned a lot just from his show, and he, he has such a great chemistry, his, his uh, voiceover, I mean, he just, he just does a great job, so I think, I think he would be a great one for this show, I really do. Okay. Well, Victor and I have connected kind of through my my pre-show prep here, so hopefully yeah. he's into that. And uh, Victor, yeah. if you're if you're watching, uh, you can like I said, find me on Facebook, or you can email me at bowlingwiththefef at yahoo.com. And uh, if you're interested, we will definitely make that happen. Um, our next uh, show is coming up uh, a week from Wednesday, January 24th. We're going to talk to four-time PBA Tour champion Joe Hutchinson and uh, talk to him about his bowling story. He's got a lot of success in the sport and personality for miles. So certainly looking forward to that one again, January 24th, 7 p.m. Central. But, Mike, it has been a pleasure getting to know your story. Um, and, you know, best of luck as you move forward, both in the league night tonight and uh, in these tournaments uh, yet to come. Yeah, and I tell you what, Andrew, it was sure a pleasure meeting you that weekend. I had a great time laughing with you, and you said, you know, you kept saying, boy, you sure are a popular guy here. And that was, <laughs> of course, that was my girlfriend, you know, piping in all the time. So I appreciate you, and, and uh, it, like I said, it was a pleasure meeting you. And then Terry, too, I, you know, when, you know, the Terry, uh, she was there, and it was nice meeting her, too. And she actually bowled here in this center, Plaza Bowl. So oh. that was that was kind of cool to find that out from her. So, yeah. but, you know, thank you very much, too, for uh, for the invite as well. You bet. No, I'm, I'm really glad this worked out, both, you know, at the tournament, kind of working that connection there, and then having you come on while bowling. Like I said, this is history here. We've never been <laughs> able to successfully do this. So I'm glad this all worked out. And, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah it was it's cool. been fun. I, you know, and I wish I would have bowled good the first game, but you know, that's all right. <laughs> that's you all right. We'll, good every time, right? Right. Yeah. We'll we'll let you concentrate on game three. But uh, everyone, thanks so much uh, for tuning in. Be just and fear not, and we will see you again coming up on the twenty fourth. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs>